Aunu Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavad Gita as it is, Chapter 8, Taining the Supreme, Text Number 4. Adibhutam Sharo Bhava Purushas Chavidai Vitam Hari Jagnaham Evatra Dehe Deha Britam Vara Hari Bhutam Sharo Bhava Purushas Chavidai Vitam Hari Jagnaham Evatra Dehe Deha Britam Vara Adi Bhutam Shiro Bhava Adi Bhutam Shiro Bhava Vitam Adi Jagnaham Evatra Deha Deha Britam Vara Deha Deha Britam Vara Adi Bhutam Shiro Bhava Purushas Chavidai Vitam Adi Jagnaham Evatra Deha Deha Britam Vara Adi Bhutam Shiro Bhava Purushan Shavidai Vitam Adi Jagnaham Evatra Dehe Deha Vritam Vara Dami Adi Bhutam Shiro Bhava Purushas Javidai Vitam Hari Jagnaham Evatra Dehe Deha Britam Vara Hari Bhutam Shiro Bhava Ushas Javidai Vitam Jagnaham Evatra Dehe Deha Vritambara Adi Bhutam The physical manifestation Shara Constantly changing Baba Nature Purusha The universal form Including all the demigods Like the sun and moon Cha and Adi Daivitam called Adi Daiva Adi Jagna the Super Soul Aham I Krishna Eva certainly Atra in this Dehe body Deha Britam of the embodied. Vara, O best. O best of the embodied beings, the physical nature which is constantly changing is called Adibhuta, the material manifestation. The universal form of the Lord, which includes all the demigods, like those of the sun and moon, is called Adidaiva. And I, the Supreme Lord, represented as the super soul and the heart of every embodied being, am called Adi, Adi Yagya, the Lord of Sacrifice. Purport, the physical nature is constantly changing. Material bodies generally pass through six stages. They are born, they grow, they remain for some duration, they produce some byproducts, they dwindle, and then they vanish. This physical nature is called Adi Bhuta. It is created at a certain point and will be annihilated at a certain point. The conception of the universal form of the Supreme Lord, which includes all the demigods and their different planets, is called Adi Daivata. And present in the body along with the individual soul is the super soul, plenary representation of Krishna. Super soul is called the Paramatma or the Adi Yagya and is situated in the heart. 
The word eva is particularly important in this context of this verse, because by this word the Lord stresses that Paramatma is not different from him, the super soul. The Supreme Personality of God had seated beside the individual soul as a witness of the individual soul's activities and as a source of the soul's various types of consciousness. The super soul gives the individual soul an opportunity to act freely and witness witnesses his activities. The functions of all these different manifestations of the Supreme Lord automatically become clarified for the pure Krishna conscious devotee engaged in transcendental service to the Lord. The gigantic universal form of the Lord called Adi Daivata is, is contemplated by the neophyte who cannot approach the Supreme Lord and his manifestation as super soul. The neophyte is advised to contemplate the universal form of Virat Purusha, whose legs are considered the lower planets, whose eyes are considered to be the sun and moon, and whose hands are cons- head is considered the upper planetary si- system. Adi Bhuta Shro Bhava Purusha Stravidaivitam Adi Jagnaham Evatra Dehe Deha Britam Vara. O best of the embodied beings, the physical nature which is constantly changing is called Adi Bhuta, the material manifestation. The universal form of the Lord, which includes all the demigods, and those of the sun and moon, is called Adi Daiva. And I, the Supreme Lord, represented as the super soul in the heart of every embodied being, and we're called Adi Yagya, the Lord of Sacrifice. Mau Vishnu Viraya Krishna Prasai Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Viranta Swami Tanamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Goravani Vicharane Nirvishesha Shrinivadi Paskya Dyade Satarne. Although it's almost inconceivable how Krishna and his form as the super soul can be in everyone's heart, and according to Brahma Samhita, Andanta Rasta China. That, in any case, that Krishna is not only in everyone's heart, but he's in every atom. And then considering that in every atom there's Krishna, and in Krishna there's all the universes inside of Krishna. So that means in every atom there are all the universes, including the whole spiritual sky. And every atom within Krishna, in that universal sky, there's Krishna. And it goes on at infinitum. So just try and imagine that. (laughs) Good luck. In any case, it is said that just like, as I gave the analogy before, John the judge, or John, he's called the judge in the courtroom, and he has a certain uniform, and he has a certain name, and he has certain activities. When he comes home at night, he takes off his uniform as judge, puts on his robe and his slippers, and his wife and children come and call him John. And he has a, all, a different set of activities to do at home. Now, if his child came to the court, it's unlikely he'd take out a ball and start playing with his child in the court, because it would be inappropriate. Similarly, at home, it's unlikely he's going to condemn his wife and children to to death because they broke a window or something. So they're the same person. They have a different name. They have a different uniform. They have different activities, but they're exactly the same person. So Krishna, when he acts as super soul, then he has a certain form, he has a certain duty, he has a certain name, Paramatma, Andaryami, but he's exactly the same person. But he has a certain function to fulfill. And we can, according to the second canto of the Shemad Bhagavatam, we can perceive Krishna's presence. That's like we can understand that we're not this body, we're eternal. So by use of our intelligence, we can also perceive that there's a super soul in our heart, which is talented about to realize in Krishna. It may not be abruptly, but by little use of our intelligence, we can see that all of this material nature is just the combination and permutation of natural energy. Natural enemy energy means Bhumir Apunlo Vayu Kamuna Buddha Evacha Ahankara Itiyame Bina Prakati Ashida. Namely, 
there's energy which is called earth. But that simply means that energy is perceivable to us as being something solid. Although nothing in this material world is actually solid, in a sense, but to our perception, we or imagine it to be solid. Scientists, according to them, 99.9% of what we're perceiving is just actually space. But we, we perceive it as being solid. And the characteristic of Earth, of course, is smell. But Earth has actually come from water, and the characteristic of water is cohesion. If you have some flour, and you get water to it, then it, it cohesives together, and you can get you can get dough. So in every element, like this chair here, there's something we consider solid, but ob obviously it's also there's some cohesion. There must be some water in here, otherwise it wouldn't stick together. That's one of the proofs that they never went to the moon, by the way, because they have footprints on the moon. You see the footprints? My eyes? Yeah, I mean, I have pictures of footprints. Oh, yeah. What's that? Yeah, so there's footprints. So if there's footprints, there must be water. Otherwise, it wouldn't coalesce. The dust wouldn't have any reason to coalesce. And if there's water, there must be an atmosphere. But they claim there's no atmosphere, there's where there's no water, and therefore you can't have footprints. Therefore, it's a fake. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> of course, maybe there's an atmosphere because when they put the first flag on the moon, it waved. <laughs> they couldn't figure out whether the flag became ecstatic because <laughs> it was on the planet moon. Or maybe there was a wind. Maybe one of these astronauts passed some gas. <laughs> <laughs> The way the flag. <laughs> In any case, the whole thing is obviously fake. <laughs> and then we have fire, which is transformative. It transforms one element to the other. Uh, water is characteristic. Earth is smell, so water is uh, taste. Unless there's water on the tongue, we can't taste anything. If you dry your tongue out, you can find out everything becomes tasteless. And earth is, is the organ is, smell, is the nose, obviously, for smell. And then we have the element fire, which is transformative, transforms one thing to the next. And the, the characteristic is light, seeing. And therefore the eyes are fiery. They're made of fire, they're fire, they're a fiery organ because they have to digest light. Unless we digest the light, we can't see anything. Everything will appear to be just one big blob. It actually takes intelligence to see things. Intelligence is also fiery. Actually, intelligence is, what's the planet for intelligence? Actually, sometimes it's Buddha. Mercury. So Mercury is not usually considered a fiery planet, but Mercury, you have to add Mercury to gold in order to digest it. So in the preparation called Market Raj, which is made out of gold, to give you prana because gold is solidified sunlight, which is solidified prana. So gold has a tremendous amount of prana in it, but it's not easy for the body to digest gold, and therefore you have to, in an alchemical process, you have to add mercury. The only th the problem is that mercury is so powerful and hot that you die from it when you try to <laughs> if you ingest mercury. But if you can, in a Bosman, if you can purify mercury, and then you add it to, in a combination to the gold, 
then you can digest the gold and you become you can become saved from instant death by taking this Bajma called Akadwaj. Because if it's not purified properly, then you'll probably die anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> That's so easy. What's that? <laughs> you could make sure they pay before they come. <laughs> Then you can blame it on the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> so light is actually fire transformation. Fire transforms just like in our body. There are different types of fires called agnis, and they transform from one element to the next. It's called the datus. We have a datus, which is named called child of plasma or limb, and it's transformed, transformed into blood. Blood is transformed into uh, muscle, muscle into uh, fat, fat into bone marrow, bone marrow into bone, or bone into reproductive. So it goes. Uh, Rasa, Rakta, Meda, Mangsta, Mangsta is actually, I guess it goes Mangsta, Meda, Asti, and then uh, Sukra and Artava. So this is, trans and for each, each, each transformation, it requires fire. Fire is what transforms everything transforms everything. In order to think we need a certain amount of fire, Agni, because we can't digest we can't digest thoughts either. Mm. And if you can't digest the thoughts and they keep on coming you go crazy. Mm. So if you don't have enough intelligence, intelligence is fiery also to digest the thoughts, and you can't store them somewhere in your brain. And after a while, you go crazy thinking about the same thing again and again and again. So when people, and anyhow, you know, we don't want to turn into an automated list. <laughs> but you have subtle, the other subtle element, subtle than fire, is air. And air moves things. Everything moves by the power of air. Even the planets move by air. There's no such thing as gravity. If I had a million dollars and I take your fifty dollars and see if it's going to attract it. The power of gravity. <laughs> it's not just saying it's gravity, it's just gotcha. Otherwise, probably gives the example why the clouds with tons and tons of water floating in the air. If there was gravity, why isn't the earth attracted and they pull down? Or you take one elephant, it can float in the water, although it's so big. But if you take one little pin and you place it on the water, it will sink. So if it was gravity, then why does the elephant float and the pin, and the pin, the pin sinks? So there's no such thing as gravity, it's just concoction. Actually, what, it, what holds things up is air. Therefore, by manipulating the airs in the body, the yogis can float in the air. They're not defying gravity. They're just being lifted up by air. So the character is that air is moving. Even we can hear in our body as we eat something, sometimes we hear it going through the different parts of our body. <laughs> Makes different sounds. So that's air moving. And hopefully it moves in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> and subtler than air is ether. So, what's the element for air? Touch. Yes. Touch. Touch. And the element for ether, which holds everything within it. What's that? Sound, yes. So sound. And the organ? The ears, yeah. But air. Air, the touch, the, the fingers, are the, are the organs, hands. 
So these are five elements and everything is made out of those five elements. Even the floor that we're sitting on is made out of those five elements and our body is made out of those five elements too. And it has all the characteristics. Now, you can take all the combinations and permutations of the material elements and you can't produce life from it. No one has ever done that, only in their imagination in a movie called Frankenstein. Other than that, there's no such thing as creation of taking the elements together and producing life from it. Therefore, the conclusion is that trust no, no future, however pl pleasant, idle talk about combining material elements to produce life is just so much speculation. So we arrive at that conclusion by use of our intelligence. So intelligence is a direction, just like a father gives direction to his child, to his son, or the teacher gives direction to the student. So in everyone's heart, every living being's heart, there is direction being given. The ant is being given direction, how to find sugar, and we're being direction how to do whatever we're doing. So Krishna says, for me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. So we all have experience that there's a super soul in every living entity's heart direct, giving direction. Now our free will actually consists in either accepting the ignorant conception of identifying or misidentifying ourselves with these gross and subtle bodies or identifying ourselves as Christian servant, eternal beings and taking shelter of Krishna and its direction. So at this point in our investigation, we find out that there are three different there are three different energies or three different elements. One is the soul ourselves. The other is the material elements in which we're now within, and the third is the super soul, who's qualitatively we're qualitatively the same as, but quantitatively we're only limited to this gross and subtle body that we're presently in, but that super soul is all pervading in everyone's body. So if we continue on with our research, we can understand that the business of the super soul in everyone's body is simply not to fulfill the desires of the individual souls according to what they deserve, but according to Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has his own abode in the spiritual world where he is engaged in his and past times with his ever liberated associates. And therefore he said, Bonam Janmanam Ante, Gyanamam Prabhajate, Vasudeva Sarvamiti, Saramahatma Sudurlava. After passing through many births and death, one who is actually knowledge surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is, such a person is very rare. So Krishna Khan is not a sentiment, it's an actual science of using our intelligence. Now, if someone doesn't want to use their intelligence, then they wind up with so-called materialistic science. Of course, that materialistic science may be a, an attempt at something called Jnana Yoga, but actually they're, all they're doing is eliminating. They come up with a theory and they, by their experiment, usually costly experiment, they just find out it was wrong. So they can go on for for millions and trillions of years, finding out what's wrong, and they'll probably never find out what's right. But with a little bit of intelligence coming from spiritual sources, developing our intelligence in that way, we can see we're eternal, that these material elements are the same as all over the universe. They're not, matter is not, life has not come from the material elements, and that we are under the supervision of the super soul and we take his intelligence that he's giving to us, then we can realize him and we can realize ourselves and everything else as it actually is. Other than that, then we have to wait, remain in the material world, simply trying to experience material energy, trying to find some kind of happiness, eternal peace and happiness in a temporary miserable place. So I'll stop there. Any questions or comments? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for the lecture. I have a question. Sometimes um, I hear um, things from Bhagavad Gita that are 
inconceivable for me. And I want to believe in them. So I rely on um, the speaker on the Vyasa sign. But well, good. Hopefully, at the time of your death, the speaker on the Vyasa sign will save you. Hare Krishna, but hopefully, um, he's thinking about Krishna, although you won't. <laughs> Krishna. Krishna may take that into account. Well, he's not thinking about Krishna, but at least the speaker right now is. <laughs> Give him a break. <laughs> yeah. But um, so uh, if, if I cannot um, everything understand with my intelligence, I have to have faith in. Um, faith in what? How can you have faith if you can't understand something? Because. Blind faith. Blind following and absurd inquiries condemn. One should not only hear one should not only hear submissively, but one should get a clear understanding through submission, service, and inquiries. So we can't settle for blind faith. We have to actually realize what, what's being said. Krishna God is not just some <laughs> intellectual exercise that you know I have faith that the speaker knows what he's talking about, although I don't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't maybe when he's going back to God, I'll grab hold of his foot. Maybe I'll get to, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. I hope it's my Kunta. <laughs> <laughs> but it's usually that uh, you you understand things when a teacher said to you things, and uh, then. You no, know, you're supposed to understand things when the teacher said it. If you don't understand it, you're not listening. Oof. It's a little bit too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, as, I, as we've heard, the knowledge is self-evident. So if we're not listening, then we won't realize it's self-evident. But I try my best to listen. No everything. one's saying that we're not trying our best. I mean, I'm also trying my best. We should... Our best is not enough. <laughs> we have to also try to put it into practice to the best we can. And then Krishna might be pleased, he may purify us, and then our best will become gradually better. Thank you for the solution. Yes, I mean, it's not that there's no solution, but we, we can't settle the fact that, well, something's going on, we should find out what's going on, and we can find out gradually. They try to understand something. And something that we can put into practice. In other words, it's not enough to understand something theoretically, but it's more valuable to understand something that we can actually apply in our lives and, and practice and then see what the result is. Then if Krishna is pleased, we're doing the right thing, the right consciousness, Krishna reveals himself, then it becomes clearer. And then the next time we hear, we can hear things more clearly. That's how we develop faith, is by experience. By following the process, we get experience, and by experience, we develop faith. Hare Krishna. Anything else? What is the role of security in this case? What is the role of Sukriti? Well, you don't deserve the glove you but somehow or another you found it on the street. <laughs> <laughs> and he ate it and he liked it and he wanted to find out if he can get some more. <laughs> That's called Sukriti. <laughs> but it's connected. Yeah, it contributes. It's connected to the temple. If you, if you find out where the temple is, you know, the glove you know, so <laughs> You get connected. Are Sukriti and Faith Shraddha connected or not? No, just by Sukriti, you're not going to get any faith. Not very much. You may get faith that you like something. Right? So that's, that's Shraddha. But Sukriti means that you. Un, 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 umuka. Sukriti means you don't really deserve to hear the holy name. You haven't done anything. You hear it. So the Kirtan party is passing and you hear it. That's what that's called. That's spiritual. You haven't done anything. 
And maybe if you develop a little liking, then it's called Shraddha. Then you may come want to find out where you can get some more. So that's called Sadhu Sangha. But does it does it cost Shraddha not? Could eventually, if you like it. Positive. As we positive, you clap your hands, you don't want to hear. And take a long time. You have a negative, you're very unlikely. Shut up means something positive. Otherwise, you'll never you want it. Unless you want to come to the temple to burn it down or something. <laughs> I'm going to stop those people from singing. I'm going to burn the temple down. <laughs> that's, that's called the demon. <laughs> it's, that's the uh, that's constant. That's the emotional service. Anything else? Uh, Maharaj, about uh, burning uh, these uh, uh, thoughts, uh, I thought that Krishna is doing that, as he says in 1515, or otherwise, if he doesn't, then, then adding a little bit of fire this could all make us very rich because now probably multi-billion industry is dealing with mental problems of unpleasant thoughts and trying to remove them with pharmaceuticals. So can you be more precise how this is done, how fire intelligence should be trained up or built up to burn uh, unpleasant thoughts or thoughts no, that, that you ecstasy, don't control? The ecstasy of Krishna consciousness will make us detach from any thoughts that might come. Krishna says, Keta Dharbana Marjana. Krishna cleanses the mirror of the mind. Through the holy name, when Krishna appears, then the internal energy is there, and Maya disappears. In the ecstasy of devotional service, all the material contamination is burnt away. Well, without intelligence, you know, you won't connect yourself with Krishna. Senses, the working senses is superior to dull matter. Mind is higher than the senses. Intelligence is higher than the mind. And the soul is higher than the intelligence. Thus, knowing oneself to be transcendental in the material senses, mind, and intelligence, one should control the lower self by the higher. Thus, by spiritual strength, conquer the sensational enemy known as love. So, when the soul connects itself with Krishna's name, form, quality, and eventually, deep absorption in the pastimes consistently, then in the ecstasy that one finds oneself in, that ecstasy burns away all the contamination. So, so actually, uh, intelligence is meant only to the, uh, to the best of someone's or, or intelligence ability to redirect the train of thoughts uh, towards Krishna, then Krishna does the rest, or intelligent on its own doesn't burn anything. Then, uh, yeah, that's right. Intelligence without Krishna, you know, like, you have intelligence in the mode of ignorance, you have intelligence in the mode of passion, intelligence in the mode of goodness. So it can bring you to different levels of material consciousness, different levels of illusion, with goodness being the least. But to actually experience reality, you have to be, you have to become aware of Krishna. All right, thank you very much. Grandaraj Bhagavad Gita Kijai, Shila Prabhupada Kijai, Gaur Pimananda.